The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, the Black Tea Party, featuring weekly discussions on political news and current affairs. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, the Black Tea Party. Where's my Marvin? I need my Marvin. Oh, yeah. Hey. Because we're going to get into it tonight. So I want to feel need to good. Calm down, right? Before, yeah. yeah. I want to feel good. I agree. So we have a moment. <laughs> Look at Don. Before we start. Yeah, Don. Uh, that undertone. <laughs> Can't live without it. It's my blackest <laughs> moment of the week. There Not it this is. week. I don't have a hey. black moments this week. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome to another episode of Black Tea Party on Black Hollywood Live. I'm Ro Moore. Your host, as always, joining me this week is not Michael T. Mutt. He had a prior obligation that he had to make, and we hate that he could not be here yeah. with us. But still joining us, Mr. Don Nash. How you doing today? I'm good, sir. How are you? Oh, man, working. You look yeah. like you've been working. Working. I've had, it's been a long day. It's yeah. been WWE coverage. It's been right. Black Hollywood Live stuff. I've been all over the place. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Working hard. So, got to gotta hustle. Got to hustle. It's good. Somebody got to do it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and sitting to his left, yes. the beautiful. Stop. I'm down with y'all. <laughs> See, look at that's what Jamie Foxx said. Yeah. My love. <laughs> The, oh wow! The I beautiful. I didn't know you watched that. <laughs> off the market, but not off the major market. Miss Stacy Ike. She is blushing. <laughs> Look at her. She is blushing. I am blushing. At this and black tea party. You can see it is wow. It's serious. I'm black, so you know. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hi, you guys. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and joining us this week, special guest. Oh, I'm a special guest. Yeah, you're gonna be a special what? guest, man. I'm gonna call you a special <laughs> guest this week. Y'all remember that dance, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was the his, bank head, bro. That was his blackest moment this week. <laughs> yeah. That was his blackest moment. What's going on, everyone? <laughs> 96 <laughs> in Atlanta. <laughs> ah, right. Exactly, the bank yeah. head. Yeah. What's going on, everyone? I, I am Cortez G. West. Um, glad to be here. I just want to sit down and have a little tea with you guys. There you go. Cool. Oh, Make, nice. Makes my job easy. Yeah, I nice. ain't have to give his name nothing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go. You won't leave? No, I'm just um <laughs> Well on another episode yeah. of Black Hollywood. <laughs> right, right, right. That is. <laughs> All right. Um let's get into it because I know we've had some people waiting for us to touch this topic. Yeah. So let's get straight into it. Uh ten black teenagers have been killed since um since August the first in oh Chicago. Um but now ain't nobody talking about that. Right. We're talking, right. we're talking about the one uh, Michael Brown in St. Louis, Ferguson, Missouri. Yeah. Um, picture of him right here. There's so many directions I can go with this story because it's evolved in such a way over the last week, which is why I always tell people, don't get caught up in the initial hype. Don't immediately make your mind up and go marching and protest. Yeah. And yeah. You don't know the details yeah. of the story. <laughs> Find out what people were mad at President Obama. Why don't he come out and say something? I'm like, he's a man of logic. Like, Let him yes. find out some facts. Let the investigation go through. And we'll all find out what happened mm -hmm. together right. mm -hmm. as best we can. Mm -hmm. But um, push comes to shove. This young man was killed unarmed, um, 18 years old, by a white police officer in Ferguson, Missouri. Um, running away from a police car. He had already been shot, turns around, has his hands up, and still gets repeatedly shot. Now, we're going to talk about everything. We're going to talk about what happened before, and we're going to talk about what happened, and then we're going to talk about the aftermath. But what do you guys just, when you initially heard the story, what were your thoughts? Ladies first. Uh. Oh, gosh. Um, well, we started with a little bit of an intense conversation, which thank God we're finally around a mic now because I was kind of losing it. But I think initially I didn't see what happened with him until I saw the protest because I have a lot of friends from Missouri. I went to school in Columbia, Missouri. So all of them were saying, hey, like, girl, this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Like, you should come back, whatever. And I'm seeing it from their perspective and from a protest perspective. So it, it seemed... You know, I, I'm not always the one to jump on a huge protest because, like you said, like, we've had so many different things happen. And with Twitter and social media and all these other things, they everything gets blown out. Quick. 
quickly, you know, to the point that I didn't even know where to sift through or what to sift through because I was like, okay, I could I could read my Twitter now, but I could I only be getting one perspective. So now what's what's ABC saying? What's CNN saying or whatever? So I I was an initially you know very disheartened by it and, and sad by it, but I was a little disproving of some of the protesters because it was just such a violent way of reacting. Oh yeah. Why did you blow up a quick strip? Quick yeah, trip. Quick I trip. I do not understand QT. that. That was so irrelevant it was different if, if that's where it happened or something yeah. but it was just a rant i'm like that person's out of business now i don't yeah. understand it wasn't the store owner qt got good coffee you know what good, i mean i mean i just don't gas. get it i mean they the only people that have a bathroom that i could actually use yeah. i need you not to and so that was really it was disappointing because i'm thinking okay this is why and i hate this phrase but they win this is why people win over black people in terms of the way people see us or the way we are categorized or whatever because we react without we react with our heart and our, our feeling, but we don't use our mind. And I mm -hmm. think they, how do you say, they they kind of um, defined everyone else. And that, that was a little annoying because, okay, so I'm a black person in the office. I'm going to speak about this. And it's like, well, did you all see what they, no, I didn't, I actually wasn't there. I don't know who did it or whatever. So, you know, I had a lot of mixed feelings. Of course, it's a very sad situation, but I just didn't like the reaction to it as much. Now that the story has evolved a lot more, Things are a little bit more justifiable, but at that point, I was thinking, okay, you're you're doing the most. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I initially was a little baffled. Um, I didn't want to believe that it it happened mm -hmm. again. Again, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I think the conversation has begun to shift for me because I, like Stacy, I'm looking at the stereotype, mm -hmm. and while I knew that this was a young black man that was killed obviously by a white cop. I have to be honest that in me, there was a little voice that said, what don't I know? Yep. Mm -hmm. Agree, yeah. Because I'm a little tired of going like this and then mm -hmm. having to go... Oh, yeah, oh, pull it back. <laughs> yeah, pull it back. You know yep. It's just like... Agree. Yeah. You know, I, and, so, and I yes. think that that's an unspoken kind of fear that a lot of us have yeah. nowadays mm -hmm. where some of our civil rights, if you will, symbols, you know, they rise and we give them the platform simply because we understand that conversation mm -hmm. and then we slowly but surely have to pull it back. Yeah. And while I still believe this young man had a right to live and should not have been gunned down, I have to have a conversation about how he shows up in the world as a young black man. Yeah. yeah. Because I do believe that there's an intimidation factor that that comes with us and I believe that there's a responsibility that we have to steward that the, the, how we show up in the world, right? If right. that makes sense. So yeah. I, I, I really that that's my angle right now. I'm a little bit I'm mixed yeah. about mm -hmm. it all. I'm mixed about it all. I don't think that what has come out in the story unfolding, as you've alluded to, I don't think that justifies him being dead. Yeah, I don't no. think, as we talked about earlier, it doesn't fit the crime. So I have to separate those two things. I can't keep them together. Yeah, you know. But I, we got to have a conversation with our people, with our young men. Yeah, you know, we've yeah. we've needed that conversation for a while because, yeah. and let's go back to the beginning of this. Um, I have the entire timeline, so I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Um, at 11:48, yeah, 11:48 um, to noon, the uh, officer responded to a call of a sick person. At 11:51, another call came in about a robbery at a convenience mm -hmm. store. So that's what's bringing the police to this area. Um, the dispatch, dispatcher gave a quick description of the robber, said the suspect was walking toward Quick Trip, which was the convenience store, the gas station. Um, and at 12.01, officer encountered Michael Brown and a friend as they walked down the street. 12.04, he was gone. And he was gone yeah. just that quickly. Now, whether he was in the robbery was of a box of cigars. It was a strong arm robbery, no weapons involved at a convenience store. Um... And it, I don't think it was the QT in question, mm -hmm. but I know it was an area store. Um, I don't know if he was the, and apparently there's there's video of him in the store. Oh, there's video. It yeah. looks very, the clothes match. It's yeah. very similar to his the family, same deal. His family has come out and acknowledged that it is him. It is him. Yes. Okay. It yeah. Is him. Yes. I've been busy so much today. I yeah. haven't had a chance to catch all the way up. But so it's him. It's him. He robbed a store. He stole a box, $48 box of cigars. Yes. Cuban yeah. cigars. Okay. Hey, those are good. And we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <I'm> like, mm. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> anyway, um, I ain't saying he should have stole them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but somehow between him stealing a box of cigars, he ends up dead in the middle of the street, unarmed, 
but at the hands of the police, mm -hmm. which leaves his mother to look like this. And all kids make mistakes. This kid was 18 years old. Yep, yep. Um, I'm not saying that he should have robbed anybody because that's absolutely wrong. He yes. was completely wrong in that. But where I see the problem happening is our culture, especially with young black men, they glorify this this thuggish outlook, this thuggish culture, this this thuggish approach to everything. But then when he has to answer for it, when the, when the pendulum swings the other way yeah. and it doesn't turn out good for him, that's when everybody gets up in arms. Cortez, you got thoughts on that? Well, I was sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like, well, what if the officers weren't white? Yeah. What if the officers were black? It's kind of one of those things. It's, it's like, and because you said they went and go and they went and blew up the station, correct? Mm -hmm. um, things, things like that for me, like you said before, it's like I have to get all the facts first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't look at color first. And yeah. I think that's what we should get out of as Americans, yeah. black and white or Asian or whatever. We should get out of color. Mm -hmm. But who killed them? Oh, if, if it was a black, a black man, I, I don't think it would have gone this far. Yeah. My thing is I like to get the whole story. And I like to figure out you know, what really, really happened because we can put two and two together. Yeah. Especially when it comes up for, to someone dying for $48. You know, that's just, that's just outrageous for me. But, 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 Cortez, do you think that it, if the guy was black, mm -hmm. do you think he would have had a reaction to the other, to the young black man the same way? And that's way, what I was going to say. Yeah. the filter? Yeah. Um, I kind of think that it is a little bit of the filter, a little bit, and it could be a situation to where this is, an area or a neighborhood that has a lot of different uh, problems already yeah. with the, within the black community. So the officers are already in a like black young guy. Let's he might be he might Stop. have a weapon. Yeah, but yeah. but, I but, think but you, you know the area though. You work in this area. This this population is yeah. not that big. So you you know the area. So none of this should come as a surprise to you. Well, it's not a, it's not a surprise to me. What, not the you. Thing I'm is, saying to oh, the cop to the cop as well. <laughs> exactly. I don't think the cop. Or it should have been a way for this guy to lose his life, use his, lose his life, because his hand was his hands was yeah. up. So why gun him down? Like yeah. that doesn't make sense. Yeah, he, he had already. But been I kept shot. thinking. But as I hear the story, and like you said, I, I like Stacy said, I kind of like fall back when I started to hear more of the story being un, mm -hmm. un, un, un revealed. My thing is, I kept thinking in my head, like, would this be so far if it was a different race officer? Yeah, and I initially, I heard the when the, when the story first started breaking, I heard that it was a black cop that shot him, which mm -hmm. was why I was so surprised the next day when I found out about all these riots going on in unrest in yeah. Ferguson. I'm, what what happened? What really happened for this to occur? And that's when it started coming out, oh, the officer was white. And I immediately jumped into their jumping to conclusions. They haven't yeah. even tried to figure out, was this officer just doing his job? Was he just trying to do what he was supposed to do? And I don't care, if people out there listening, I know right now, there's a bunch of people right now talking about, well, y'all not down for the cause. Y'all not this and that. No, not if the cause is stupid. No, but the I thing is, the thing don't is, get me wrong. Yeah. The yeah. thing is, our job um, in hosting a show like this, this is a this is a, an amazing platform for realness, for truth, yeah. and just for, for objectivity. We can't come in here, be for black you know people, and say, that's what we're about. Yeah. What What? what service would we be doing? We're you know what being, I mean? We, we would have we have right, to be as objective exactly. as we can in a situation like this. Yes, this is a really disheartening and unfortunate situation, but we really need to look at all the facts, which honestly, none of us really know all the facts because yeah. they are really being good and, and slick about the way that they're revealing it or whatever. But one thing that really hurts me about this is it's another situation where it makes it look like the only people that live in this world are black and white people. Yeah. Where is everyone else? Can yeah. we not dilute everything down to just white and black? It's really annoying. I mean, I have a lot. Can we just, all right, my best friend's Asian, my ex wife can we just bring up other people in this world already? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. really yeah. annoying to me because it, it it always brings us down to that point, and that's why we still have such a distinct divide. Oh, yeah. It yeah. has to be a white cop, and then if a black cop takes it over, it's all going to be good. No. What if he completely agreed with what his partner did? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't remember the cop's name now that's, that's taken over the case necessarily, but when I was looking at articles, they were like, he's they were basically saying he's coming to save the day, and I'm like, because he's a black cop? Yeah. He no, might just be a good cop doing yeah. his job, sure. But so was the other cops that, or so was Governor Nixon or so was, you know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. other people involved with different races that are, that care. And I don't like that we, we do that. You know what I mean? And with, it, you know, like Cortez said and Don, if, if he was a black cop, I just, I feel like it, 
I think we, we both agree. We all can all agree that it would have gone differently mm -hmm. in a sense. I mean, I'm just assuming. We know it, it would. would. Yeah. I, I think it would because there's some there's this whole fatherly figure that could have that could have taken place he could have said man step back what are you doing you know he could have talked him down or whatever the case is but let's say he did go f did the exact same thing i feel like we should still be looking at it as police brutality mm -hmm. that's Forget it my point That's, is that position should have it's not just, been gone down. It's just That's police the whole brutality. It's yeah. not about racism anymore. It's just the fact that police, because the thing is, if he did this to a white guy, it's still police yeah. brutality. I don't know if, but I don't know if you can say that completely. I think that when a white cop is approached by a black guy, and that black guy apparently is giving him some type of aggression back, he sees him as a threat because of who he is and possibly because of his color. Yeah. You but, can't take that out of the equation because another brother in that car would not see that threat. Well, Doug, that's right. our fault. As African American, that's the, that's our fault. If if we're so aggressive all the time, i.e. we blowing up a, a, a QT, of course uh, a different race cop is going to be like, oh my God, this is an angry black person. But oh my God. But the thing is, with, with me is, I, I kind of wish that we could get out of this whole racism thing. I think racism still does ex exist today, mm -hmm. but in a different manner, yeah. in a different level. We're able to, as black young, young young black men, I'm sorry, we're able to guide a situation to a better place, whether then I'm getting sh gun shot down and not like all my friends and everybody's going to believe because a white man got me down. He was in the wrong. What did I do? Look at what mm -hmm. I did. Make sure, let's, let's, let's get that crazy because we do have a pattern. But but let's be very real here. We're yeah. we're a subculture of our culture. That's why we have this point of view. You, you see what I'm saying? I see what you mean. So yeah. there, You're there probably is, very right. There is a majority of our culture mm -hmm. that may tend to perpetuate the stereotype. Right. So when someone comes up to you or I, being mm -hmm. black men in this room, we're going to make sure that we give the friendly eye <laughs> and the smile, you see what I'm saying? Simply the one because, Cortez is doing right now. <laughs> because we know that making that connection allows me to show up in the world as yeah. being a friendly person, and sometimes we overdo it just so that we don't we're not misunderstood. Yeah. 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 Now I personally get tired of having to do that much work. You know. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. Whose fault is that? Because Cortez's last point was, okay, that's our fault because sometimes we are aggressive. But I'm like, hold up. We talked about three weeks ago the two white people that blew up that Walmart. Mm -hmm. I don't. Is that not called aggression or what? Like, I get what that. Was we that? talked about them too. I mean, all things being equal. We did. We talked about them a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But let's say you have two people that had this. Let's say they had the exact same clothes on. They had the same demeanor walking up to cops. I mean, yes, things went badly for them as well, but are they always seen as threats? I mean, that that's the thing. Who's is that our fault? Who, yeah, who like that, is you a can't threat. just be black? I don't. Yeah. Know, but no, but, uh, and it, 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 a, threats come in all colors. Brother, yeah, I love what you're saying, but I, I look at my brothers and I see threat. Thank oh yeah, you. no, yeah. No, that's my point exactly. It's that. the, it's yeah, the exact right. same thing that Stephen A. Smith was talking about on first take when he was defending Mark Cuban's comments. Right. Where Mark Cuban said, "If I'm walking down the street and I see, and it's in the middle of the night, and I see a black guy with a hoodie on, I'm gonna go across the street. If it's one in the morning, if he looks kind of menacing, and if there's a white guy on the side of the, on the other side of the street with a shaved head and tattoos everywhere, he's gonna go back across the street exactly, again. Exactly. Exactly. And it's that that the the perpetuation." Of of that image is so glorified now and so many people buy into it through you know whatever means hip-hop movies media and this these are the things that happen when you want to have that look I was in a debate today with a guy there's a picture of Michael Brown in uh, in a room full of you can see the weed smoke coming up behind him he's holding a gun he's got a mouth full of $100 bills and there's, I, I can't remember if there was liquor on the table. I should have um, sent in the picture so we could show it. But it's, it's definitely on my Facebook page if you want to see it. Um, find me on Facebook. <laughs> but, um, and I didn't want to believe it was Michael Brown. I, honestly, just as black man seeing it immediately, I went. I don't want because don't wanna... it at that point it dials down it dials the story. Down, yeah. yeah, it dials down the story, and now you're like, he's not okay, a, maybe he's not Mike. A victim anymore. Exactly, mm -hmm. he's not the freaking victim anymore. Yeah, that's the and they point. did the same thing to Trayvon Martin, and when when everything came out, you know. Black, mm -hmm. white, yellow, green, whatever the situation was, they made sure to assassinate his character. Yeah. And I'm not saying, actually, I don't really know what I'm saying when but it comes to that but, because but, I. But Stacy, they gotta have you know. <laughs> If we rise up and reach the bar of character and integrity as we want, to, as we proclaim that we are, then they should have to dig for something on you. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't want to yeah. just get the most recent video clip of you walking down the street. Yeah. They and make see that you your entire life. Well, yeah. not only do they make it, but we make it so readily available. Yeah, true. I didn't because even have a five minute Facebook. lapse before this kid yeah. was in was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And now you're telling me more about other images that are out there in that the, he posted himself. That he posted yeah. himself. So this is who I am when I show up in the world. Yeah, he perpetuates that image to the world, but then gets angry when, and not him specifically, but I know a lot of black people, yeah, yeah. As, as a whole, we get angry when people look back at us with trepidation. But that's yeah. that's we my don't, thing. We don't this kid should that not be dead. He should, he should not, not be. be dead. I want to make sure that's clear. Yeah. But this kid needed his butt whooped because he should never have been allowed to live the kind of lifestyle where he thought he was going to go in there and rough up and steal some dog on cigars. And What's up with like that? Was and that goes back to parents that they, goes back to all the way to the end at home you yeah. can i mean i can just tell that by the way she was reacting was as if you know her, her her son did no wrong yeah and don't get me wrong to those of you who are listening and watching it's not like we're saying that this situation um is like yeah the, the white cop did his job no it's it's a he thing didn't. of no <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't. really didn't it, exactly it's, yeah. it's, it's, don't get us wrong we're not trying to say that this situation you know is is, is supposed to be what what am i trying to say i guess with the with the guy him he should have never died like Don just said the guy should have never died, but at the same time it's one of those things where it's something that happened in between that like I'm not getting the whole full story. The yeah. thing is we have to do better. We just have to do better. We we've talked about this when it comes to so many other situations like this before. Um, you know I wasn't on the show when when the Trayvon Martin stuff happened. Was I? I don't think so. Uh, no, no. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, point is I mean when these situations continue to happen over and over again, just like you said, I mean, to see it and say, okay, is this happening again? Mm. What is it that's making it happen again? Yeah. Why do they continue? And and why are we seen as threats? I mean, because there's, there's also a stereotype for black women with certain yeah. outfits who wear camouflage with a backwards hat, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's like, you know what on, I mean? It's, on this show, I, I, I get what you're saying. On this show, you weren't here yet. But on our very, very first episode when we were just testing this show, it was me, it was you, it was Kevin Undergaro, it was, um, um, I can't remember her name, Chickless, uh, Michael Chickless' daughter, she was here, I think her name is Susan, mm. and Kevin Undergaro. And my question to them as white people was, what about me is, intimidating. is so intimidating to you? Because that's what I believe is what ended Michael Brown's life. Yeah. Whatever happened at that police car, I'm not sure. We know that there was a tussle between Michael Brown outside the car and the um, the cop inside the car. We do know there was a shot fired from inside of the car. The word from the police is that Michael Brown tried to grab the cop's gun. If he did that, hey, all bets are off. You know, if you try to grab a cop's gun, that's your idiotic thinking. It doesn't mean that but ten, you, 10 shots yeah, should happen. No. Now, but let, me, let me clarify. Thinking. Yeah, yes. let me clarify. If you're trying to grab a cop's gun and he pulls his gun in self defense and shoots you right there at the police car, that's justified. I ain't got no problem with that. That's just a cop protecting yeah, himself. Right. He's doing what he got to do. Okay. But once you've run 30 feet, 30 yards, or however far it was down the street, and the cop has exited the car, and now you've turned around. I don't know if he was hit already, but the way it sounds, he was already hit. And he turns around and he puts his hands up and the cop continues to fire. Now we're in a new level. But you have to make sure that those facts are sure. indeed facts. Yeah. But and that's, that's the thing. We're not and the reason being is because when I watched this video of this kid in this liquor store and I saw the way he handled the clerk. Mm -hmm. I saw how intimidating he chose. Yeah, he to got be. Bronny with him. He got yeah. it, exactly. And he when went I back. saw that, it then made me wonder whether or not there was credibility to the officer's story mm -hmm. that he came after him. Yeah. Because I just saw him go after someone, which now looks like the way you move around. Yeah, that looks like the um, way you carry yourself. Right. Now, the the story about him running. Is a different version when the officer. Well, gets everybody it. run when the fire when the guns go when off. When the guns go off, true, everybody <laughs> yeah. runs. But in terms of the officer's story, was that he came to him at the car yeah. and tried to get through the window, mm. right? When he tried mm. to take his gun, which is the reason why there was a fire that went off in the car. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that first shot went off from the car. Now, what we don't know is whether or not the officer reached out to grab him, because that was the first story. Yeah, that and was had the him first in a thing. Right, yeah. right. Or whether or not he went in to get the officer. Yeah. 
And, no. if, and now I have to look at both stories as being possibly credible because yeah. I saw you in this liquor store. Yeah, right. that's it's, the thing. It now becomes, you know, can't now that the, that happens, the, we don't know which way to go. I understand that, and I, I, re I actually really do agree with what um, Don you, said. Stacey. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I mean, like I said, like like we all can all right. agree on. I feel like we are looking at as much factual information as we can. None of us are trying to jump the gun, and I really appreciate being in an environment like that where we're just looking at it as objectively as we can and trying to be better. Yeah. You know, but the fact is those two, well, I assume the fact is right now, those two are unrelated, right? He didn't see him and think he's a suspect of this other yeah. situation. He didn't think he, he was a suspect. He just had an issue. Yeah. He, and he that's was what I don't. That's what I don't yeah. like. But there's been a little waffle on that. On fact, that as well. Because yeah. even when you read the, the statistics earlier, or not, I mean the facts earlier, you said a call went out. Or, you know, so we don't know if the call went out to the car so that the cop was listening to it on the radio, looking for someone that was walking in that direction. Mm -hmm. And then that's the reason why he decided to yell out to these two dudes that are walking. But I feel like they would have made that clear because they already... They, they kept so much under wrap, though, Stacey. I mean, but they, that would have made the cop look better, though. It could have made the cop look better, but they were trying to make sure they could dismantle this entire story by bringing up this footage of the, you know... Well, the, the Ferguson police, uh, uh, just for a minute, I want to talk about them. They we don't like didn't them. know how to handle anything concerning this. Let's, they should have got a PR person for real. Yeah, let's like, move just... past the Michael Brown killing, as unfortunate as that was. And that shouldn't have happened. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. But the aftermath of this this is this let me know that that community the police department did not have community outreach mm -hmm. in areas of racial tension or high crime the police department should always be readily visible and have an ongoing relationship with all the community leaders so if anything ever happens they have people they can go to cortez i can go to you and talk to you about your neighborhood i can go to you and talk to you about your neighborhood stacy if i need That's to talk to you to true. calm people down yeah. i need to go to you they didn't have any of that. Yeah. Right. So it leads to this this non-communication and this huge unrest and a, a mistrust even more so of the police department mm -hmm. because they think they can't trust the police at all. Not, not only did you just gun one of them down, you're not but telling us now what you're not happened. telling them what happened. Yeah. And you're not giving away the name of the officer who even did the shooting in the first okay, place. Okay, but wait, with that, I wasn't sure how I felt about them hiding it because the truth is why... Why do I need to know again? Well, why, do, why do I need to know? Because why that, do I need to know the exact I need to know name? So I can put a name to yeah. the person I'm putting the blame on. I, don't, that's exactly, I it, need to know it was a, a Ferguson c police the officer. The reason the reason need the name that. needs to be out is because that's public knowledge. Because he's a public servant. And no, this is true. To okay. calm this down. Now, I know what, why okay, they held so it. So if they said, Stacey Ike. How does that make you guys feel better that my name is out? I don't understand. Well, we're not I don't looking for better. You we're just not looking to feel better. We're just looking for... for They're looking for info. Well, here's the reason why I would not want his name out. Because if you're going to go to a QT and blow the QT you're bus, about to yeah. you're going to do the same thing. It's the same yeah. situation with um, Trayvon yeah. situation. Like, I, I just... I, I, to be honest with you, I don't even want his name out. It's I, enticing I don't need them. to know it. Yeah. But I'm like you. I, I, need, I just need to know that it was a Ferguson police officer. And then now that he's white. So at this point, it's kind of like, okay... I didn't. I didn't care whether he was white or black. I originally. was gonna say that. I was yeah. like, well, not, well, I'm, I'm speaking on someone who's out in the street. Yeah, who's out there? Who's out yeah. in the street? And then there's a. I think there. I read something where a young lady said that this um, situation should have been all over the news. I, I definitely disagree with that. I think this is a situation where they're trying to turn it into a Trayvon situation oh, and yeah. get the yeah. the attention mm -hmm. from that same situation. Yeah, the media is definitely and all doing those because everyone went really went in for the family of Trayvon's Martin. So I think this is probably like one of those situations they're trying to do that same thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's going to turn out like that. I, really I, don't, don't, think I so. don't think it shouldn't be covered. Like I, I can see where you're coming from. I don't think it. I don't know because I'm thinking if they didn't cover it the way they did, I wouldn't know as much. And I do. I am happy that I know as much. I need to know what's going on. I mean, this is a. I have friends that live here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But why is it that every time we do a story like this, I, you I, got connections to? No, it's not. It's like Houston with justice for Jada, the Ethiopian girl. Yeah, and then I was Nigerian. Yeah, Nigerian. Yeah, my girls back. Look at you were. Look at you. You got the Nigerian connection. Know. You got the Houston. Good you got Missouri. Or... I can tell you. <laughs> all the no, news don't tell me. Don't tell me. Because <laughs> I, can, I can feel you right now. No, I guess I'm just. I'll, ooh, I don't know now. I'm kind of like freaked out a little bit. I mean, I went to school in Missouri. We'll move on. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful state. I wouldn't say it's a beautiful state. I went to a great school. We'll move on. Um, 
Yeah, but... But, but you know, I, I think that we need to be more socially responsible because I understand why they held a name. I think they should have held a name. Yeah. But I also think the manner in which they've done this has not allowed there to be any healing or truth. and yeah. build yeah. any trust from yeah. the community yeah. because the fact that they held the name until the day yeah. and until the moment they released the video yeah. made it now look as if, well, you held the name because you wanted to come in with a trump card. Mm -hmm. He's a victim. Would... This is the victim officer, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was the same thing we saw with Trayvon. When Trayvon, uh, when that happened, and this is a completely different situation, obviously, because Trayvon was murdered a month before <laughs> anything really hit the media about mm -hmm. that. Oh, yeah. So we we didn't know. But um, to, to have a situation like that with that going on, with the Trayvon situation, like I said, it was different. Everything needed to come out at that point. With this situation, it seemed, and, and then they, they jumped into the, the, um, the dehumanization of Trayvon Martin. That was the next thing. Yeah. It was in layers. It was, first, we're going to tell you what happened. And then we're going to tell you why you should be mad at the guy who's dead. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then we're going to keep Gosh. jumping on that until you think that the guy who shot him was in the right. With this, it's a lot harder. I mean, Trayvon's situation was so hard to figure out. It was at night. It was raining. Nobody actually saw it. This one has witnesses, even though nobody was right there at the car. Um, George Zimmerman obviously was not a cop, former cop, or well, former security guard or whatever. This was an actual peace officer. Um, and, and once again, policing a pretty much all-black community with a almost all-white police department. Um, and then... For them to roll in with tanks. Oh my goodness! Did you see that became <laughs> the, a, the most militaristic yeah. demonstration I've ever seen before in my understand. life. I don't understand why it has to, everything always equates to. I mean, the tear gas. That uh, do you feel like what it was the right thing to do? No, I, th I think it was the wrong thing to do. I think it was interesting to watch the news because I'm watching what's going on in the Middle East. Yeah. Right. I'm watching Gaza be blown up, and I'm watching Ferguson be blown up as well. I'm seeing puffs of smoke, and I'm seeing people. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. That's how we see the people. Yeah. You can't just allow that. To me, I don't know if it got to the point that the protesters needed to be tear gas because I don't know, weren't they being peaceful? At least in that situation. Well, initially yeah. they, they were, were not. Though. Initially well, they, they weren't. Sure, they because, but, but they cl I don't even want to call those people protesters. If you're going and you blowing up the QT, you you tearing it up and burning right. it down, you're not a protest. you're taking but, pictures but on on, with it. And, but, yeah. but let's keep it in context. You, you're dealing with a disenfranchised group of people. Yeah, that's true. And they look for one moment to release some pressure and they release. Yeah. yeah. That's what they do. I yeah. mean, unfortunately. And I don't think that's just black. We just see it yeah. happen a lot in our area. And we just over emote with everything we do. The the officers been there really fueled the whole situation with the protesters in the first place. Because they're they they're already mad at the police mm -hmm. already. So you're gonna you're gonna add more officers right there and you you guys are like fully yeah, and they come back mode. Like, yeah. come on, that doesn't. That doesn't. Yeah. I, I've heard if everything. They, from... If they brought some brothers over there, that probably would have put a little lid on it. You well, know those, did, though. The some first of those five or six people that were there were, were, were African They only had three well, really? in the entire force of Ferguson. Yeah. Only three out of 57 on the staff, I think yeah. it is. A staff of 57, they only have three. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah. So when the you pictures look, made it look like they were more. Yeah, that well, yeah, because they well, were that's all, because they, they, were all they, yeah, garb, you they know? were and they brought in people from St. Louis. When St. Louis right. showed up to uh, to was, help out, which is much bigger. Then police you got department. some pigment oh, on the force. Fueling, yeah. the, fueling the fire. Yeah, wow. and they, they did stoke their own fires. Yeah. So with, they with trying to quell the unrest, they added to it by bringing in such a militarized approach, yeah. which scared the rest of the nation pretty much because now you have a lot of people going, well, wait, how militarized are the police? And well, how, we don't have how, a. What we don't know is, is from my military background, what people don't know is that the uh, police departments do have this same protocol that they need mm -hmm. to change actually because the days back in the day when Martin Luther King was marching and things of that nature, it wasn't. You didn't need to do what you did then. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think they need to look at that in a different way. Yeah. As far as the new age of people are not protesting like that to a level to how Martin Luther King was. Yeah. And, and Malcolm X was doing back in the day. So I think they need to work on that. They were only following protocol. The person to me that should have been, should be looked at is the person who sent out that call. Who sent the call in, yeah. Who said Exactly, this. who said, yeah. okay, I need this, I need this, I need that, like, that's just outrageous. I don't think anyone out there, if, if they had weapons, it was probably sticks from holding up signs. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think they came, were out there with weapons for them to, 
you know, yeah. have thro um, tear gas thrown at them and things like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't see anybody with an so SK in the street. It was so dehumanizing, you know what I mean? Like, it was literally, by the way, not only do we not care about this guy's life, we're just going to let you guys know that we can attack you back. We can mm -hmm. put you guys to rest. And it's like, mm -hmm. why don't you allow them to express? I, I don't have a problem with, with them expressing themselves. It was the, specifically the store thing that really, really bothered me. But having the signs and being out there, I mean, gosh, it's their city. But yeah. what do we do when the expression is intimidating? The expression. Come I mean, on, they had guns. It was 57 cops and guns. I, mean, I, don't, I get it, but I'm talking the, about. It's not. It's not I, I, I see where you're going. I mean, we we show up and we're intimidated if we don't do anything. We're intimidated if we we're even more so intimidating if we express ourselves. A couple of months ago, my son had a car accident, right? And he calls me and he's like really really hostile over the phone, you know. I was like, okay, I'll be right there. Well, I get there and there's like 16 white kids you know, that had been driving kind of like together caravanning, and mm -hmm. then there was my son. And my son was over there fighting the air. You know, he's punching and fighting the air. And so I get <laughs> he's pulling there. the Cuba Gooden no, Jr. from Boys to Men. I mean, Boys to the Hood. Man, he was doing it for real, you know. And I walked up and I said, I'm going to need you to bring this down to zero. Yeah. Bring, bring this down to zero. You had a 10, I need you at a 2. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm going to meet you right there, right? And I told him right there on the curb, I said, listen, if these people have a video of you doing this, and they shot and they shoot you, your mama and I are gonna be on television talking about he was really nice. He wouldn't hurt a fly, you know. That's not the story I want to tell. <laughs> yeah. Because I saw the way they saw him. Exactly. Yeah. And the point this was the amazing part. The accident wasn't his fault. The 16 white kids were saying it was his fault. Mm -hmm. There were people in their homes in a white who area out. who saw whose fault it was. Yeah. And they came but out. But they didn't come until I arrived. Oh. Until the calm guy showed up. See, when I came and I went over the bridge, a gap between me and these 16 white kids. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then they came out to me and said, it wasn't your son's fault, sir. Here's, you know, here's my card if you, if yeah. you need a witness. You know? And, I, and it was a great teaching moment for my son yeah. because he was able to see you know, this is what you're over emoting here, and I know that you won't hurt a fly, but the way they see you, yeah, you know, suggests violence. So I'm looking at a community of people coming out here, arms raised and, uh, 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 yeah. and sweating on our brow, you know what I'm saying? And, and some of us are cussing, you know, yeah. we busting verbs and thumping participles. And the next thing you know, somebody is saying, You're too pissed off. Mm -hmm. Have, have we, have we, uh, as a culture, oh, embraced man, that, so that we've been disrespected for so long? approach have we have we embraced it so much so that we don't know how to let it go that we don't know how to go you know what i was just disrespected but instead of me getting angry and yelling and doing everything and pulling guns out why don't i just go why don't i just say something that goes yeah, with the maturity it, of the person for one that's true and, I, and it goes to the upbringing of that person yeah um i was a bad child i'm the only child and i was a very very bad child i went to two sections of therapy one when I was younger that my parents put me through and one that I put myself into. Mm -hmm. The thing is with me, it just becomes on the mental brain of that person. If that person is strong enough to realize that I don't have to waste my energy on that person, yeah. whether they're white, black, Puerto Rican, whatever the case may be, was if that person is that smart enough to, to push it to the side, then great. But the problem comes from the ones who are not strong who can't enough do to that. do it individually or yeah. um, self, you know, self esteem yeah. or self discipline enough to, to say, no, this is not how yeah. I'm going to act because this is not how I want to be viewed. I really think that a lot of this comes up from the upbringing of, of kids. I really do think that it starts from yeah, the home. I, I believe you. I, I mean, really you, do. I love how you brought that up because the thing is, parents, they're awesome. But in this day and age, they're not raising us. Our TVs are rating us, raising mm -hmm. us. Our Social iPods media. are raising us. Mm -hmm. Our Twitters are oh, raising yeah. us. Yeah. Okay, my sister is 11 years old. My brother is nine. These kids know everything about everything. Oh, yeah. I'll ask them who's the hottest new person on the map. Who's who was at Teen Choice? Who was at that? They know it all. Mm -hmm. If my parents were at home all the time, they wouldn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. But they're at work trying <laughs> to put food on the table. Yeah. They're trying to make going to PTA meetings. I mean, my, they're busy, and yeah. it's so hard to watch. I'm I I cry with just the people around me and and I bring that up with my family a lot and and with aunts and uncles and I'm like look I need you to skip that meeting or this church thing or that there whatever mm -hmm. to be at home to be there because I because it happens a lot in our community and it's a lot of right. communities it's not just black yeah. um parents yeah it's, no it's, it's all that's, I mean, this that's, is all, that's a proclamation okay yeah. parents are doing just as much they're on YouTube videos too yeah. they're doing everything you know what I mean that's like true. even, even the ones who stay at home 
everyone's out here trying right. to do it. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like when I see a 55 year old on Instagram doing it, I'm like, I'm confused. Wait, we're merging <laughs> gaps? I didn't understand. I mean, seriously, like every celebrity who's over 50, when they have an Instagram, I get, I'm just, and yeah. it's like popular. That they went, on, that went along. It. Yeah, that went so, along with the economic change in America because yeah. back in the '60s, you always had either you had you had a parent at home, you had one that worked because you could live on a one salary household at that time. Right. As time went on, '80s came up. Things got a little different. By the '90s, both your parents are working. Both of them are busting their ass and doing what they need to do. Now. Now the parents, some parents have two jobs, two parents, two four jobs yep. right. in one household, and they're never at home for their kid. Yeah. Right. So the, they can't be there. Yeah, and to go to what Cortez said, so if it does go to the upbringing, which, like I said, it's the upbringing of whatever, I'm I'm just trying to see when people get to learn the difference, between, you know, the, the tactic of bridging the gap, which is yeah. another thing mm -hmm. I kind of have a problem with. Mm -hmm. The fact that we always have to, and I was, you know, I'm... I come from a very educated background. My parents are, they're both in the medical field. They're, they never taught me the difference between race. They literally, like literally going to college in Missouri was the first time my parents were like, oh yeah, we're black by the way. Like besides <laughs> that, I have never heard my never parents thought. ever say, yeah. by the way, work double the time because blah, blah, blah. You just mm -hmm. do it. You just work hard. You just be awesome. You just be great. Right. That's yeah, like right, what right. I That's, it. That's the way it's Seriously be. going to college was the first time I was like, oh, I'm a black girl, so I need to act this way. And I do and I've already always been the token black girl because I didn't I didn't know that's what I was before that I thought I was just being myself but to know that now now that I'm aware of that and and I have the type of friends I have because you know you, you kind of hang with people that act like you in a sense mm -hmm. but just in general people who don't act like me and people who are a little bit different or whatever come from different backgrounds the fact that they have to go in a situation I better alter who I am I better wear these type of pants because I don't want to be seen this way but yeah. why do we have to walk around worrying about how people see us. I mean, yeah, I get it. There's right. all these notes that we've talked about, the intimidation factor, the this, the that, but seriously, who wants to live? That's why our skin, we get so, we we hate ourselves in some situations. I literally have to go into a room and I have to say, okay, don't say, uh, say, mm, don't say, the, make sure, I have to overanalyze, I have to be in the mirror, practicing my, my hello speech, yeah. when another girl with blonde, beautiful, long hair can come in there with her short, short dress on and her heels and say, that it looks like guys. she, and just say hey and still get, the, and <laughs> her and I will both get the job, but I had to work 15 times, I mean, come on. Yeah. So I don't understand, like, it, it's not an easy thing to just, even earlier I said it, let's just do better. I almost take that back because even though I agree we need to do better it takes it's gonna take so much more than just saying be better we have to go through so I'm not gonna say we have to go through so much more I'm just saying there's a lot of pressure on mm -hmm. on someone with a certain figure or came from a certain background if I'm from Ferguson and I don't have the education or I didn't understand when I try to go into another situation I'm gonna be seen as intimidated, intimidated. Mm -hmm. not ready not prepared not you know whatever not qualified right. when I didn't have that same privilege mm -hmm. and that's that could be with the white person with the black person yeah, with the whatever anywhere. person yeah. you know and with ferguson i was looking up some some of the statistics it's 70 percent black and 93 percent apparently have been arrested or in jail or this i mean come on yeah so every single one of the 93 percent are are intimidating or didn't do this or all stole cigars or do we really have another issue mm -hmm. a race issue which I, I, again, like I've never been around a family that was, by the way, we're racist or whatever. We have all these issues, but we're now it's 2014. My parents aren't, we're not crazy. We sit around, we have these discussions. Yeah. And now I have to understand right. this is what well, let, we're let doing. Me, let me throw something out, out at you since you said that. Because you talked a lot about portrayal and how people view you. So let's take everything we know about Michael Brown. We know about the pictures. We know about the picture he took with the gun. We know about the robbery. We know all of that. But if he was smart enough to go when the officer said, hey, man, get out the street. I don't know how he said it. I don't know if that's exactly what he said. I don't care if he said, get out the street, nigga. I don't care. That's a cop. I know he got a gun, and I don't. I'm going to just go get on the sidewalk. Simple as that. Was there that you ain't going to tell me to get out of the street moment? Or did he just... You know, uh, what? where was that moment? Because that's where the separation happens. I've noticed that. What you said, because you had your upbringing the way he was talking about, you know, okay, well, even though it's unfair, the world is not fair. You just got to deal with it. Yeah. It's not fair, but I got to be this way. It's not fair, but I got to do this to get where I got to go, and then I'll make it better for the next one yeah. because that's the way it should be. Everyone that comes behind me sitting on a mic, I'm trying to make it better for all the ones that come right. behind me right. who want to do what I want to do. Right. So with that happening, I'm going to take some L's. <laughs> I know that. 
Michael Brown maybe did not want to take a L that day, which would have kept him alive. I don't that's think what he, I'm thinking. I don't think he even thought about a consequence. That's I know the, he didn't. That's the problem with yeah. what happened. Don was very right in terms of how he discussed and described his reaction and his intimidation factor in the with the clerk. He acted a fool. He should not have acted that way. He should not have. I mean, if you watch the whole video, it's like a minute or whatever. Mm -hmm. He went back like three times. Yeah. Was that necessary? You, If you were trying to steal, just leave or whatever the situation. He didn't have to feel, by the way, I want you to know I stole and I'm, I'm the man. Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is you walked in and stole, were robbed this place. Mm -hmm. And there were video cameras. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think he cared. And here's I mean, the like thing. I said, no... so, but, but if you are that desensitized where you don't care and you don't calculate consequence, then what is that saying? Yeah. Exactly. I know, what, you, I know you got accepted to college at? and you're supposed to go to college, yeah. but But where's on. your head at? I mean, exactly. well, even after the consequences, even after, yes, he did do wrong, I still go back to this thing of what well, we felt to realize realizes that our mind we store things in different categories and different departments in our yeah. mind so when we're growing up and getting older and our parents are, t are talking to us i've learned that how my mother talked to me affects me today yeah. when i was younger how my mother uh, talked to me as i was growing up when i was in trouble or if mm -hmm. i did not do anything or if i did anything how she spoke to me affects me today yeah and my therapist helped me to realize that so in his case in mike's brown case I really do. I can even look at her and I can probably tell that she probably cusses Mike Brown down. Oh, yeah. She probably yeah. just, get your. Uh, like, she we, looks you like just she's always her. yelling. Wow. You just profiled that. And let me tell you why I just profiled right, her. Go ahead, look. Because I did see a clip of her talking on on air. I got you. So I, I you profiled her because, it, so yeah. I can see that. So my thing is like someone being pointed at all the time and yelled at all the time. It just sometimes when you go outside of the home and you're dealing with someone that's not your mom that you can't hit back or fuss back at. Yeah. It's like, well, I, you can't tell me what to do. You're not my mama. That's the first thing they say. You're yeah. not yeah. my mother. You're not my father. That's true. So, like wow. you said, he probably had a mama where he did not want to take a L day. So yeah. he was like, you're not my daddy. I'm not doing nothing. I'm crossing the street. First of all, you're illegally crossing the street. Bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think it comes to a, to a point to like sometimes we forget the little things of human nature and like how, you know, we talked about this on the other show, Urban Wellness and Beauty. It's like how you grow up and how things are brought into your vision and in your life, your body is, your mind and your eyesight because you have a connection from your eyesight to your brain. So everything that you see and everything that you learn and read goes to your brain and it affects you in a way. And it's up to that person to store it in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Mike Brown could have been that kid that's, I hate my mom fussing at me. I hate them always whooping me or I hate them always doing this, so I'm going to be rebellious. But he also could have said, well, I'm going to be the next president, mm -hmm. the next black president. But he chose to go by what was handed to him. Does he have so, enough around him to influence him in, the, in a positive way and say, I'm going to be the next re president? I mean, does he have enough around him to no, back but you that can. up? No, but you can. I kind of feel like people these days have the ability you're right. To put yeah. themselves right. in positive situations. Yeah. I think that okay. people do, but I think that people have to have access to those yeah. resources. And I think that in some of these communities, or knowledge of them, they don't have access. They don't know what they, they don't know. know. Yeah. If you yeah. want to be positive, you will get there. If it's something that you want to do, you want it to be. You wanted to host this show tonight. You wanted to be here, so you made time to get to come here. If you, I feel like if you want to be positive and if you want to be a person of the better community, be example. Be, a, be an example. Mm -hmm. So therefore, let me go out and be that positive. If I can't find it, let me be that positivity. But I, I, and maybe I'm looking at it just from my own vacuum, you know, because I, I grew up in the inner city. Family wasn't really well off, you know, wasn't raised by my parents. And that should be motivation. Right. Well, well it wasn't motivation mm -hmm. growing up. But one day, somebody took me to Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Just one day. Mm -hmm. And I remember the day. They took me to Beverly oh, yeah. Hills. I remember walking down Rodale Drive and saying, ooh, I like this. Ooh, mm -hmm. I couldn't afford <laughs> nothing. The next Saturday, I jumped on the bus, and I found my way back to Rodale Drive. Took my cousin with me because I wanted him to see wanted what I saw. See. Yeah. Right? And after that, I started hanging out, Camp Beverly yeah. Hills. I went to, you know, roller skate in Beverly mm -hmm. Hills. I'm eating in Beverly Hills because I can do this. But somebody had to give me access to that. To that yeah. Yeah. Before that, I mean, I thought Wilshire Boulevard was, was crossing <laughs> state yeah. line. You know, I thought going too far north. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Crenshaw yeah. Boulevard was so far west. It was the west side back then. Right. You yeah. follow wow. me? So because I did not, I didn't know what I didn't know. That's, so I yeah. think that sometimes we don't go in and give the access yeah. to people in our community, so that while they have a choice, 
they don't really know the choices that they have. And that's what I'm saying. Like who? That's that's why I go back to the upbringing because, like you said, we don't go out there and do that. Right. It should start yeah. from home. Yeah, it's got because to. you trust these people more. Right. You believe this is your mom. This is your parents. Yeah. This, these are your. This is your family. You should trust them more. If your mom says, your mom, your mom told you not to touch the stove. It's hot. Mm-hmm. Oh, mom told you not to touch it, so I'm not gonna touch it. Okay, fine. So upbringing definitely plays a factor. But if Mike's Brown, Mike Brown's mom also never had the exposure, then it, what? It, yeah, you're right. It yeah, goes down. So, it I mean, goes the all the way down. Generational curse. I you're right. You know what? Do we? Okay. So yes, sir, we look at her. We look at the father. They didn't. They might not have that access either. Yeah. Wilshire might have been the stopping point for them as well. So what do we... But yeah. at this day, it, I feel like there's no excuse. That's it, the it thing. Can In start 2014, like right now. You're, you're right. I mean, but well, but like I said, music and Instagram and Twitter and just like ratchet is a word, okay? So like look at the gender. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's a word. Okay, every, every, did you guys see what they just added into the Oxford Dictionary? They added ratchet into the dictionary. That's wow. where we are right now. They added SMH, shake my head. That's not a word, it's an acronym. <laughs> That's in the dictionary. Right. So I mean, at this point, I don't know if you are only exposed to certain things and if hip hop is leading your life and if this certain music is leading your life, how are you ever going to going to branch yeah, out? It, the wow. the people who break out it and it's not so many so many fail to break out the ones who break out people like don people who decided because the thing is you have to be responsible for your own personal choices that's the yeah. one thing that a lot of people regardless of color have to accept you make certain choices you got to learn to deal with it like i can say pretty much whatever i want to say on this mic but let me be let me work for uh disney and they were on this show. And I kids. try to say what I want to say <laughs> right. on this mic. I, I got the right to say what I want to say, but they got the right to tell me you don't have You're a job. Fired, right? <laughs> yeah. Those are some of the things that you have to, to take into account. You know, I got the right to go and quit my job and act however I want to, but they got the right to not pay me no more. <laughs> you right. know? Yeah. So it's, it, it's those type of situations. And I don't think that that has been taught enough that you got to you have look to look at how reasonable your consequences are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a different set of concepts, you know. Because I, I don't think that a lot of people in their upbringing, I wonder how many parents actually instill you can be better. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not many. Not and many. It, like, like Stacey said, it goes back to from the parents, the parents' parents and the yeah. parents' parents. Yeah. But at some point, I feel like you just have to stop. Like, yeah. you have to stop and say, okay, wait. <laughs> yeah. I, this is not how this I want not to life. live. This doesn't and seem this like not, this can't be life. This is yeah. not yeah. cool. Like, again, this is not. And then my thing is, I want to ask the question. What if Mike Brown shot the officer? Oh, now how would this story? Yeah. How would how this would story this have be? turned out? But yeah. then we back to race again. As Not even of, that. As of, as we would choice. we would be into community decisions then because if he shot the cop, how many people in that neighborhood that went and <laughs> burned down the QT would be trying to say, "Yo, he did it"? None of them. None because of they them. would have nothing to say, though. I feel like that it just wouldn't be the same. Yeah, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. It would be a completely would, different we have situation. We unspoken community agreement that we we're going to hold up each other's yeah. back. But yeah. when you yeah. do wrong, I'm not going to say nothing. And that, I, I, I understand <laughs> that because that goes back. That that's been part of our culture since the 1930s and 40s. The right. reason why I asked that question is because we're talking about this topic right now tonight. Yeah. Because Mike Brown got sh- shot and he's he's dead. But if the cop officer was shot and was dead, would we be saying that, okay, yeah, the, the, the Caucasian community had the right to go and blow up the, the QT no, or we, blow up his house or we, blow up the We wouldn't the, because the, Mike the, Brown would be, in, would be in jail right now. He'd be under the jail. So my and thing is, will we still hey, have this? Yeah. So and we would even know. have this yeah. on the show, talking about this right now. We wouldn't have it on the show. We wouldn't even know this story. I don't think we would know the story because he would have shot an officer. They would have come. You know, he would have been, ooh, life or, or mm-hmm. you know, murder um, on do. trial. So this and goes, back to, it goes yeah. back to we know the story because it's a white cop yeah. and a black guy. I'm, I'm going to give you a story now. Um, Birmingham, Alabama. I'm going to make sure we close because uh, we ran it out. Of, we ran it a little bit low. Got like eight minutes left, uh, seven minutes. But we were um, in Birmingham, Alabama. There was a story uh, 2003, I believe, maybe 2002. Uh, four cops went to a house. It was a known drug house mm. to try to, um, they were serving a high risk warrant. Now, there's a long backstory to this situation that I know, but I'm not going to get into right now. Um, but needless to say, there were two guys in the house who were the main drug dealers, and one of them had an SK. Three of those cops did not leave that house. 
One of them on the steps, two of them in the kitchen. I knew one of the ones in the kitchen. I didn't know him personally, but I saw him around town. I knew him at a couple of my hangouts and stuff like that. All of them lost their lives. The guy who pulled, the the two guys who were involved, because they were trying to arrest one in the kitchen and the other guy came around the corner with the gun. Not only is the guy with the gun on death row, but the guy who's getting arrested is on death row just for being in the house and knowing what was going down, knowing that the guy had SK and not trying to stop him or whatever. Um, But I'm guessing you didn't hear that story. I didn't hear that story. I'm guessing you didn't hear that story. I'm guessing you, because that happened and that was a local story in Birmingham and it didn't make it past that. And I'm pretty sure, and it happened in the hood. I'm pretty sure, and, and that was the other thing, people in the hood were like, punk ass cops, that's what they get. That that was the approach, and we have to also stop that as yeah, well. Yeah, we do. If, yeah. if, if, you want commun- if you want your community to get better, you gotta start wanting better. And Start with self. Yeah. yeah. Start with self. Before we close, can we, I would love to know what you guys thought about the group Anonymous and how they revealed. How they, they completely they, flubbed the they name. They totally, <laughs> they totally acted like they were cops in this situation. Yeah. And I, I didn't, I had never heard about them before that. Oh, that yeah. I feel really I've bad that Anonymous. I haven't, but I, I, let me be real. I, I had never heard of them and I was so interested to fat, to see how they the felt that that was necessary. Mask. Yeah, that, there they go. We are anonymous. They are cyber, uh, people call them a cyber terrorist group. They consider themselves a cyber, um, really, information liberation group. I really group. wonder if they could figure out who they are. Because I'm so like, many maybe it wouldn't them. be anonymous Yeah, anymore. they're all over <laughs> right. the place. Like, they're, it's a team of, I mean, not a team, but it's just pockets of computer hackers all around the world. They were very instrumental that? in WikiLeaks, and I mean, you got to be in that computer hacker circle. I mean, okay, so I'm in the, like, I, well, I just, I just want to know what the handshake is like. They, or something. They I don't know. Meet, they meet up, they find each other. I just want to know what, how do you trust me to get in this and not but turn my back on you guys? The fact that they don't have centralized command was really shown when the fact that they released the wrong name and no, there's nobody to answer for that. Right. <laughs> now that's true. They just did not it. even within themselves. Even gangs have a way to police themselves on right, the inside. Right. And they, I don't even know if they have that. Wow. Because they're all over the place. What so, did you guys think about their, you know, their, um, Initially, like I'm, I'm still torn on anonymous because uh, they do some good, and they obviously in this situation they do some bad because they made a guy's life hell for about 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, situation like that, they always they they tend to try to do things that they believe will help the public. That's their approach. But listen, anonymous, I'm gonna ask y'all to do something right now. Listen, hack the credit bureau. Do that. Do something that'll help <laughs> us. Right. Okay. Keep going. Yes. I have a couple loans I'm trying to get rid of. Salome. I already told you, really? you what school I go to. Hack. You know, I got some loans I'm trying to get rid of. Yeah. They, I, you I turn don't... that to zero, we can talk. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, is, if you guys are going to do what you're doing, I, why Why so? Why that? They never partner with anybody that could be bought out. Salome, yeah. <laughs> I mean, loans, never Michael know. I'm just trying to figure out, because I, when I saw what they did, I'm like, okay, so should we have allowed the police to just do their job or did they feel like i just don't they understand. felt like it wasn't happening quick enough and, and they, they said if this wrong, name is not yeah. released we're gonna release the name and They're then we're gonna scared. start releasing information because they they are a phenomenal group of hackers they can get deep into people's systems and find things out but with this one i man i've never seen them drop the ball harder because they they were in, instrumental in WikiLeaks. They were instrumental with um what was the last big one that Anonymous was on? They've tried to hack almost every government computer. They they found out so much information. But how how can I how can I trust your credibility with stuff like that? If if you're gonna if you're gonna hack and, you and you're gonna hack into that system and you drop the ball on something so simple, it's Ferguson Police Department. It's not like they behind a thousand and whatever bit yeah, encryption. Fifty-seven names to get through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. And then y'all can pick one. I mean, you know, I don't want them to come after me. I'm just saying, help a brother credits go out of something. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Anything, man. But yeah, we we gonna wrap. We only got a couple minutes. Um, just out for a sec, I want to say rest in peace, Robin Williams. A lot of wow. people got angry about um, Robin Williams getting so much coverage and Michael Brown not getting as much coverage at the beginning of the week before we really knew the story and started finding out the details of what happened. Looking for things to write Just about. looking for okay. stuff. Just yeah. looking for things right. to write about. Come on, Robin Williams died. We're allowed to cover you know, it, okay? We, we got thousands of people being killed over in the Middle oh, East yeah, that we've yeah. been talking about, too. But we're, yeah. you know. uh, Robin Williams entertained the world. 
So they people who say, well, y'all should have been covering Michael yeah. Brown more. And Cover everyone. It's a four, usually is a 30-minute show, okay? Yeah. Everyone should get some coverage. Exactly. And Gosh. I'm not even talking about our show. I'm just talking about in general. I'm just shows. Yeah. I mean, no one just covers one thing, Yeah, right? they never no, do. Just... They never do. But you know, uh, it's, it's, it's worth noting that there's also a case going on just like this in New York mm -hmm. where there was a, a, a man that was killed by a police officer who had asthma, who was screaming he could not breathe when he was in the chokehold. Yeah. And they yeah, were protesting. Yeah, they did, yeah. Yeah, and even this week in, in L.A., there was a young man that was, that was killed one. face down in the ground. He was shot in the back. Well, yeah. you know, we got we got, we have Oscar Grant. We have that situation. We have, um, what was the Kelly, the guy down in the O.C., the white schizophrenic guy oh, yeah. who was screaming, help me, daddy, yeah. when he was choked out and beat to death. Um, and... It, Let's let's talk about police brutality next week. Let's talk about it. I think you, you guys should definitely tweet us. I love the people who keep in touch with us on Twitter. Please tweet us some of your ideas when it comes to that because I will be so ready yeah. for that topic. It, me it, too. I mean, you just listed seven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so because that was this. We would have gotten got to it. it tonight, but yeah. the, this story evolved so much in the last seventy-two hours yeah. that I knew we wouldn't get, really get to the police you brutality can't catch part. Up with it. I don't even know how I feel about this story. <laughs> yeah. I At the end, I'm like, all we right. We talked about this, the third, and a thunderbird. That's I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you come up with this it's stuff? Oh, I love it. God. That's old so school, good. right there. So Man. good. So Cortez, where can the people reach out and catch oh, you? I gotta man? go to first. Jeez. Oh, never mind. I go to Don then. <laughs> nah, Don, where kidding. can the people reach out? <laughs> I'm, just first, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Or well, you can find me on all social media, use, uh, media you guys, um, at Cortez G West. Make sure you follow us as well as uh, on Beach, BHL, I'm sorry, online on Instagram. Cool. Miss Stacy Ike. Hey, you guys. You can definitely check me out at um, on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram at One Take Stace. Ah, you can find me on Twitter, Don Staley Dose. You sure it's Twitter? Is it Twitter? <laughs> yeah. I think it's Twitter. It's Twitter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on Don's Daily Dose. Yeah. <laughs> you can always find me on Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. You can find me on the Twitter. Right. And <laughs> Rome the Ruler. And you can also find me on IG under Empire of Rome. Once again, this has been another episode of Black Tea Party on Black Hollywood Live. Join us next week because we're going to talk a little police brutality. And hopefully they don't kill nobody before the week go out unjustifiably. Gosh. Fingers crossed. We Fingers hope. Crossed. We'll see. Right. Anyway. See you guys. Thank you very much. Good night. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Really? Oh, Hollywood. 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 <laughs> the views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in-depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.